Hello, I've been collecting materials for the Redwood Violin for some weeks now, but today I'm actually going to get started building it. I'm going to start by making the ribs, or the sides of the violin. These are made of six strips of wood, usually maple, but I'm going to be using apple wood from Sebastopol. The side strips are joined at their ends with six little blocks of wood and for that I'm going to be using some box elder that grew in Santa Rosa. The edges of the ribs are reinforced with another thin strip of wood called the lining and I'm going to be using box elder for that as well. While I'm working on the ribs I'm going to be using a form or mould that holds the blocks in place while I'm carving them and fitting the ribs to the blocks and the mould gets removed when the ribs are finished. All the information about the outline and the dimensions of the violin are stored in this plastic template that I'm going to be using. I'm going to start by attaching my template to a work board with a nice clean piece of paper on it using a couple of locating pins. I'm marking on the outline and the positions of the corner blocks. I'm going to use these two spaces so that the mould is going to be held in about the centre of the ribs. So now I'm trimming the end block down to size, it's cutting out the width, and next I'm going to split the extra length off. And uh, there's two reasons for this. One is to get rid of the extra material, and the other is to find out how the grain is running in here, because later on I'm going to be cutting in a mortise for the neck to sit into, and uh, I want that grain to be running out um, so that I'm not cutting into end grain when I'm trying to fit that mortise, and I can make a cleaner cut. And uh, just here, I'm just marking the top of the block. Um, later on, I'm going to take the rib structure off of the mold, and um, without that mark in there, it's hard to remember which side is the top and which is the back. And uh, you can end up sticking the ribs on to the back and the front the wrong way around. Same thing for the bottom block. Uh, here, the run out doesn't matter. Um, the bottom block is going to get an end pin drilled into it. So for the top and bottom block I'm using the box elder that we got and uh, it's a nice strong wood. It's not going to split when uh, it's having these holes put into it, the, the mortise and the, the end pin. Um, top and bottom blocks do tend to split so I've seen that a lot doing repair work. So uh, you want something nice and strong there. Uh, the box elder is a little heavier than I would normally use and so I've decided to use um, redwood for the corners. So the redwood's a very light wood so it's not going to be adding any extra weight on out on the edge of the violin um, which might possibly have an effect on the responsiveness of the instrument. Um, and then the other thing about the redwood is it's got a very straight grain, it's soft and it cuts easily and that's going to be very helpful. Um, when I'm carving those subtle curves that go into the corners there. So those are all done, shaped and ready to glue into place with a little animal glue. Actually quite a lot of animal glue. Um, I want them glued on there really firmly so that they don't come off by surprise when I'm working on the rib structure. Uh, if that happens you can end up with some damage. So there's the blocks attached to the mould. I'll give the glue a couple of hours to dry and then they'll be ready to be shaped so that I can attach the sides to them. So now my template with the design for the outline of the violin goes onto these locating pins and I mark the inner line of the ribs onto the blocks and flip it over, do the same thing on the other side and then that is ready 
to be rough trimmed on the bandsaw. So I'm not cutting very close to the line here, I'm just getting rid of a bit of the wood so I don't have to chop too much with my gouge. Now final shaping with the blocks. I start with the end blocks and shape those with plane. First to cut to the line that I have on either side, working along the grain. First I go from the top to the back and then from the back to the top. And when I've got down to the line, I come and work it around the block, working around the curve. I've got a slight crown or a curve on my plane blade, so when I'm making this sideways cut, it's making the end block very slightly, very, very slightly hollow. And that means that um, when I put the rib against it, I'm going to be sure that it joins, joins properly on the edges of the rib. And finally, just test how well it comes down onto a flat surface. Rock side to side, but not front to back. That's good. Going to use this inside ground pattern makers gouge for cutting the curves on the corner blocks. Uh, this is the first time I've actually cut into this redwood, and uh, it's kind of crunchy, a bit crisp, um, but I think it's it's leaving a nice smooth cut. So the way I'm doing this is trimming down to the line that I marked on the corner block, but I'm not making a perfectly vertical cut yet. Um, once I've trimmed down to that top line, I'm going to check the face for square, and I'll start trimming off the, the lower half of the block until I end up with a, a nice vertical face on there, at which point I'll have same curve on the top and the bottom there. Here's my mold with the blocks glued on and trimmed and ready for me to stick on the ribs. I haven't trimmed back the corner blocks on the outsides yet. That's going to happen after I fit the seabout ribs and glue those in place and then we'll trim the block and the rib all at the same time. But I'll tell you more about that in the next video.